Last month I was in Pakistan, and while leaving on the airplane at dawn, we turned west from Islamabad and flew high over Afghanistan, the most rugged landscape you can imagine, the graveyard of empires. I then closed my eyes and was overwhelmed by a flash and a visionary journey unfolded. I will now relay that journey here. I was with Naim, a Pashtun cook and head of the house, and he was at the wheel of the house van, driving me out of Islamabad, far to the north into the tribal lands of his family. As he is a Pathan, you would trust your life to this man. We left the chaos of the Grand Trunk Highway and bumped along through hard scrub and villages, stopped for tea and continued higher and higher. I was tracking our progress on our iPad's GPS map. I then looked up and was taken aback by a young man in a green shirt appearing suddenly in front of our van. We came to a grinding stop. He beckoned us out and reached out his hand for my iPad, saying, that thing can't take you any further. Give it to me. His t-shirt said, Apple Genius. So I thought, well, he's the man, so must know, and I gave it up. The iPad blipped out of existence like a crashed app. In its place appeared a hand-embossed silver cup. The genius handed this wordlessly to me, then he himself blipped out of existence. Naim glanced at the cup and said, Get back in van. I now know where we are going. We climbed higher until the van's transmission was on the edge of giving out, and then we got out to walk. We seemed to walk for days, or was it just a few minutes? Passing monkeys fighting over dry berry bushes, we heard the sound of a stream. Naim's sandal feet took me to the toe of this stream, where it seemed to disappear into the ground. Naim said, This is the water that feeds the world. Feel it on your tongue. I looked down and I did not see flowing water. Instead, there was a rivulet of what seemed like cold, molten white porcelain rippling over the rocks. I bent down and put my eye just above this snake-like ribbon and it resolved into flowing liquid tiles, clearly of the Multani style. Deeply edged within these turquoise bands was lettering of the swirling sacred Shah Mukhi style. I am thirsty, but of this water I cannot partake, I said, looking back up at Naim. Then we move on, he said, and walked away. We lost the way of the stream and climbed what now appeared above us as a mountain. We then rediscovered our water which was now flowing wider and faster. Naim stood back as I reached my hand into it. Cool, molten white tile flowed past my fingers, but this time the lettering jostling in the turbulence was Greek. Iskander, your Alexander, was here, Naim said. I am now very thirsty, but of this I cannot imbibe, I said, to which Naim replied, Then we must climb very high. High on the cliffs, Naim paused to look down at the ruins of a village that lay far below us. He seemed momentarily sad, and I asked, Where are your people, Naim? My family are all gone. Your people sent a hellfire missile, and the tip found its way under the ribcage of my son and lifted him to heaven. We walked on in silence. The stream now ran fast and wide like a sheet of blank paper with an aquamarine border, no longer carrying words, but a human figure or running animal would often flicker past. Rumi has shaken the rug, said Naim. Come further if you can. We are coming to the source. I was becoming very weak, and so I gripped the cup to draw strength from it and noticed that its engraving was gone. It was now as smooth as skin. Naim stopped before me and turned and said, Still your monkey mind, the source lies behind me. The upwelling source was of pure white liquid brilliance, the milk of the earth. No mind inscribed it, no beliefs colored it. 
It was pure emotion, pure love and pure consciousness in one. It was the coming to full awakening of our ancestors before they descended into history. I looked into Naim's eyes and saw that in him the strength and purity of that first awakening flowed still. Naim, are you the last human being left in the world? I asked. Drink, but don't think, he said. And I knelt down as if in prayer. Written by Dr. Bruce in June of 2012 and read by Saad Zia in November 2012, this has been another episode of Dr. Bruce.